Hello everyone, I'm Tammy Min from Raffles Girls School Secondary, Singapore, and I'm 14 years old. So let me share a little bit about me. I'm a member of my school's robotics club, and I've been doing robotics since I was 10. I really enjoy STEM, especially in the field of robotics and competitive programming. I have won many awards, including the Best Penetration Award for iCool and Cold Space Rescue First at U19 last year. It is my second time participating in the RCAP Cold Space Autonomous Driving Challenge U19, and my first time was during Singapore Open last year, then known as Grand Prix. For this challenge, I investigated many tool problems. What is the best and most efficient line tracking algorithm? What factors should I consider in coming up with the fastest path? This was achieved through a modified version of proportional, integral, and derivative of PID line tracking and identifying shortcuts. These methods help me pass through all six waypoints and reach the finish line in an average of 52 seconds. In conclusion, although I'm pretty satisfied in my results, I still feel that I can improve by taking advantage of more shortcuts and by using other sensors the robot has. The mission of this challenge is to pass through all six waypoints circle here in the shortest time possible. While analyzing the challenge, I realized the order in which my robot should pass through the waypoints is straightforward, so I do not need to leverage on the shortest path algorithms such as Dijkstra, which I used in Singapore Open last year, to devise the order for the robot to complete the mission in the shortest time. I ensured that the first and last waypoints should be closer to the start and finish lines respectively, and each waypoint should be as close to the previous waypoint as possible. I coded my robot such that it took the path shown. The first strategy I implemented was PID line tracking. I calculated the error, which is the distance between the robot's optimum and current position. I set the optimum position to the middle of the RF sensors L1 and R1. In this case, at the current position of the line be between L1 and L2. The error is negative 0.4 minus 0 0.0, which equals to negative 0.4. As such, the robot needs to turn left to correct itself, such that the error is 0, 0.0. After calculating the error, I can go on to calculate the proportional, integral, and derivative values. For proportional, it affects the rate of turning of the robot, as well as its direction. An error of greater magnitude will result in a proportional value of greater magnitude, and thus a higher rate of turning, as there will be more urgency for the robot to correct itself. As for direction, a negative proportional value results in the robot turning left, while a positive one results in the robot turning right. For integral, it is the sum of all errors since the robot starts its PID line tracking. Since positive right errors should cancel the negative left errors, the sum of all errors should be zero. For derivative, it anticipates the next error by taking the current error minus previous error. This can help to mitigate the effects of a large proportional value if the current error has reduced significantly. Next, I will multiply each of the values by a constant, which I need to tune, and add them together to give that rate of turning. Other than that, the robot also needs to turn right, just before it meets the wall here, to continue on its path. I coded the robot such that when the front of sonic sensor detects a reading of less than 10, which means the robot is near to the wall, and the color sensor senses purple, the robot will turn right until one of its IR sensors detects the black line. The robot then continues line tracking. This resulted in the robot completing its mission in just slightly under a minute. To improve this timing further, I identified two shortcuts I could take. The first shortcut bypasses the bridge. The robot does not drive around the larger circumferences of both roundabouts and onto the bridge. The second shortcut reduces the number of bends in the path and is shorter in distance. I code a robot, such that when the color sensor senses either yellow or blue, the robot turns right onto the shortcut. The robot has a higher turning rate when it senses blue, so that it can turn a larger angle. This is achieved through increasing the differences in wheel speed. To exit shortcut 1, the robot turns left upon its color sensor detecting magenta. To implement these strategies, I needed to research on how others have implemented them so as to get a better idea on how they can be coded. This is done by looking through research papers. 
I also ran my code in a graphical user interface or GUI. And from there, I can debug on and improve my code. I need to debug two problems so as to make my code reliable. First, the road fell out of the track at tricky lines and oscillated too much at straighter lines, which increased the time span. To solve this, at lines which is more bends, I modified my PID line tracking by increasing the constants for a proportional and an integral so as to increase the error and therefore the rate of oscillation, as well as decreasing the speed so as to allow more time for the robot to correct itself and vice versa for the straight lines. For the robot to know which section of the map should the various modifications be made, I use the waypoints and markers. For example, between the third and fourth waypoints, the robot should increase the constants of proportional and integral and decrease its speed. The second problem was that the robot was unable to find the line after turning a junction. Therefore, I made my robot turn at a slightly slower speed and ensure it stops turning only when one of its IR sensors has sensed the black line. However, since the IR sensors will have sensed the black line just before turning, this may have suppressed the turning function. As such, my robot checks for the black line only after the robot has turned about 30 degrees. My mission was completed in 52 seconds. I chose PID over conditional steering, as PID makes the path smoother with the inclusion of integral and derivative, especially at tricky lines, as it takes into account previous errors, while conditional steering only checks the current position of the robot. If I were asked to improve my code, I would leverage on these two shortcuts. For shortcut 3, the robot turns towards waypoint 4 after stopping at waypoint 3, instead of going into the maze. For which the robot needs to slow down and spend more time. This was smoothly done through hard coding. For shortcut 4, the robot runs through the center of the map to reach waypoint 3. It taps on the gyro sensor to drive straight at precise angles since there are no lines to line track during most of the journey. Shortcut 3 saves 6 seconds, while shortcut 4 saves 4 seconds but the reliability of the robot is greatly reduced as the robot keeps falling off the lines. For future challenges, I will look into how I can improve the reliability further. The learning experience is far beyond rewarding. In terms of code, I feel that I have done way more hard coding and less soft coding than in Codespace Rescue. Soft code is predefined functions that can be used on any map, while hard code is code that can vary from map to map. That is one piece of hard code may be able to work on one map, but not another. I have also learned more about how varying different constants in PID can affect the error. This is fascinating to me, as the PID is applicable in real-life robotics, including self-driving buses. To all aspiring participants out there, do not give up, even when the robot falls off the line. With that, my presentation has come to an end. I would like to thank the RCAT organizers for this wonderful opportunity to participate in this challenge once again and for making this such a fulfilling learning experience. And for everyone watching this, thank you for your kind attention and have a nice day ahead.